One of the things I love about being a financial advisor is frankly, I learn as much from my clients as they learn from me. I get to see them handle challenges and how that goes. And one of the things I've learned from all this is just how quickly people can change their life for the better if that's something that's important for them. So let's go for a walk and let's talk about it. I wanna share with you some things that you can do to dramatically change your life for the better in a fairly short period of time, like 12 months or less. And the first one is, this is a weird phrase, so stick with me. I want you to be aggressively patient and I want you to be aggressively kind to yourself. What do I mean by that? Um, you, I want you to have a sense of urgency but also realize that things can take time. So there's a patience, but you're kind of waiting in the wings just in case you're giving yourself the time it takes. For instance, you know, if you're baking a cake, right? A cake takes whatever, 35, 40 minutes to bake. Um, and, and you can't rush that, right? You can't take the, the cake out in 20 minutes, but you know that. And so you're prepping and you're doing everything you can. And as soon as that cake is ready, you're ready to take it out and you're ready for the next step. So that's what I mean by being aggressively patient. And then by being aggressively kind, I mean, be kind to yourself. It's, I think particularly here in the United States, we really, we, we celebrate success, we celebrate entrepreneurship, we celebrate people taking risk, but you know what? We kind of brush under the rug when people have the inevitable failures, that's part of the journey. I, as, as, as good as the United States is as at embracing people that stretch themselves and take risk, I think we have a long way to go on being kind and being accepting and really celebrating failure for what it is. You're one step closer to, to, to your journey. So if society's not going to be kind to you, uh, if you do have a failure, I want you to be kind to yourself. If, if things don't work out the first time, if it would be easy for you to beat up on yourself, I don't want you to do that. Okay, number two, I want you to be super, super careful what you say to yourself, what I, what I call self-talk. I want you to be your biggest fan and I want the voice inside of your head to be your biggest fan. So never put yourself down and don't let other people put yourself down right? You do the best that you can. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes, but no negative self-talk. And, and that's hard to do, I know. And I can tell you, you know, for myself, that, that involved, you know, being kind to other people first. You know, that voice that you tell yourself is often the voice that you share with others. So part of my journey was being kind to others and, and um, being encouraging to others. And then also, frankly, there was some therapy involved in it, right? I, I had this voice of judgment, and I think a lot of us do have this voice of judgment. But I can tell you now, um, I'm, I'm happy to report that Asul has basically conquered that voice of judgment. Now, I'm almost 60. I wish I had accomplished this in my 20s or 30s. The journey would have been a lot more fun. But think about that voice of judgment and think about your self-talk. And, and what you tell yourself when you make a mistake, the things I want you to avoid is self-talk like, oh, you always do that. I knew you were gonna fail, right? And you're not verbalizing it, it's just in your head. And instead I want you to say, I'm proud of you for having tried. You know what, failure is part of the process. You are one step closer. That's, that's the voice that I want in your head. So please work on that. Okay, number three is I want you to focus. It's, it's hard to try a bunch of different things. For instance, the last 12 months for me, right? I mean, I have, my, I have my family, family comes first. I have my health, I have to take care of my health. I have my work. And outside of that, I have time for just one more thing. I don't have time for five more things. And you can guess, you're seeing what that one thing was for me, it was YouTube. And, and sometimes, you know, it's this shiny object syndrome. It's just natural to, to go after the shiny object and the next thing that seems exciting. Uh, but I want you to focus. I want you to have the, the foundation there, which to me, for me, is, is my family, is my health and my work. And then after that, I, I want you to think about how, how many other activities, how many other goals can you have? And I think for most of us, it's, it's one, you might be a super person and have two or three that you can do, but it's not a dozen. And I see people 
you know, for a month they're excited about one thing and then for the next month they're excited about something else and they never allow themselves to succeed in the thing that they're currently doing. So I want you to give yourself the time to succeed. Related to that, for most of us, it helps to have a plan. Not for all of us, we're all different. But for most of us, having a plan and, and then executing on that plan. Again, I'll use my YouTube uh, channel as, as an example. You know, I had a goal of, you know, to publish a, a video every day and, and to try to make that happen and then to execute on that plan and think, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking here uh, talking. I don't have a professional camera. I'm just talking into my iPhone here. So, you know, what did I have to do to make it simple and easy so that I can do it? Same thing for all of us. Have a plan. What, what's reasonable? What can you reasonably accomplish? And, and how much effort and, and difficulty is reasonable to, to take on early on in that journey? And, and come up with your own version of, instead of having a professional camera and doing a YouTube channel, come up with your own program of having an iPhone and talking into it, whatever your goal is. Okay, the next one is, I think it's helpful if we take accountability. We take accountability for ourselves, for our goals, and when we don't hit our goals, you know, accepting that responsibility and saying, okay, I need to change some things. I don't want you, obviously, you know, I don't want you to beat up on yourself, but I do want you to be honest. And I do want you to say, okay, I wasn't able to get this done. Now, now let's look logically at this, not critically, but logically, why was I not able to do that? Was it a, a lack of information, a lack of education, a lack of skill? Okay, well, let's pick up that skill. Was it that uh, I didn't budget enough time? You know, maybe instead of hanging out with my friends uh, for an hour every day after work, well, maybe I had to cut that back to a half hour, whatever it is. So take accountability. Uh, continue on this list of how to change your life and how to change it fairly quickly. Um, this, forgive me, I'm a financial advisor. I have to add this to the list. If you have not saved your first $100,000 yet, I want you to really, at some point, work on that. Now, if you're 18 years old, that's not a reasonable goal. Uh, but if you're 25, if you're 30, if you're 35, I'm not saying you should be there already, but I'm saying the sooner that you get that first $100,000 saved, now you have your money, that $100,000, working hard for you. So it's really hard to save that first $100,000. If you save $10,000 a year, and if you're fortunate and you get 7% return on that $10,000 that you're saving every year, it's going to take you almost eight years to save $100,000. But you know what? Fast forward a couple years, now <clears throat> to gain $100,000, Let's say we, we fast forward 15 years and now you're $400,000 and, and you're looking to save another $100,000 to go from $400,000 to $500,000. Still $100,000, but instead of eight years, guess how long it's gonna take you? It's only gonna take you two and a half years. And with that first $100,000 that took eight years to save, 80% of that final $100,000 was money that you put in. But when, when you're going from four hundred dollars to $500,000, guess what? It's only half of the money that, that is that incremental 100000 So 50000 of that new 100000 is is coming from your hard work and your savings. But the other 50%, $50,000 in this case, is coming from the money you saved previously. So that's another thing. If you haven't yet, I want you to try saving your first $100,000 because it will make the the rest of the journey easier. And speaking of that, one of the things during this, this year of change, during this period of change, during this period of improvement, I want you to, to think about erring on the side of doing things that are fun and easy. But I have to put an asterisk next to that. There tends to be two types of people. Folks that, you know, we over-focus on trying to achieve goals, so we're too goal-oriented. And then folks that could benefit from being a little bit more goal oriented. So the do that, which is fun and easy. I want the folks in the first category, folks that are too goal oriented to work on that, right? Because we have to throttle back. And if, if you're not 
if you're not as goal driven, you're like, you know what, that's all I, I, I kind of feel like I need to be trying harder. If that's, if that's your camp, then, then probably doing that, which is fun and easy, uh, is, is not the best advice for you. And the best advice for you would re really choose wisely, right? We want to measure twice and cut once. Choose wisely what you want to focus on, but then just laser focus on that and give it time. Give yourself 12 months, okay? And um, I, I want to share a couple really important questions that will help guide your year of change, your year of focus, because we want to make sure when we reach the goal that this is a goal that's important to us, right? There's the old adage of, you know, people climbing the corporate ladder and they get to the top rung of the ladder and they say, oh, gee, I didn't realize I leaned my ladder against the wrong wall. I want to be on the other wall. I don't want that to happen to you. So here's five questions I want you to be thinking about. Number one is who do you want to be? Who do you want to be in 10 years? Who do you want to be in 20 years? But let's say that the goal is to change our lives over a 12 month period. Who do we want to be in 12 months? Second one is what do you want to have tried? You look back at the end of the 12 months and what do you want to say? You know, it may, it, hopefully it worked, but it may not have worked, but at least I tried and I tried this. What is that this for you? What do you want to look back at in a year five years, 10 years and say, you know what? I'm really glad I tried that. Okay. Uh, the third one, and you can see this is who, what, where, who, what, when, where, how, and why. Uh, so the third one is where, where do you want to go? You know, are there places that, uh, now this is a longer term one in 10 years, you'd, you'd say, you know what? I really wanted to be able to do this. I th I've shared on this channel before. I've been fortunate during the pandemic. I was able to travel. I was honkering down in other countries, uh, but it was more enjoyable for me to honker down in Mexico with my adult daughter uh, than to be honkering down in my basement in Utah. Um, and I'm really glad I was able to do that. So the question for you is, you know, when you look back in a year, in three years, in five years, where do you want to have gone? What, what adventure with that? Okay, number five why are you here? And by that, I mean, what's your sense of purpose? What's, what's important to you? What, you know, what's your special gift that you're giving? And this is your purpose. So, you know, I, I believe we all, there's a reason we're all here. So why, why are you here? And what's, what's your best and highest use of, of the skills that you've been given? And then finally, and this one hopefully is 20, 30, 50 years away for you, but how do you want to be remembered? So, that is that is my who what where when and why and how and related to this how do you want to be remembered and and this this spirit of change the change that we can make in a year i want to remind all of us all the viewers that it's go time and for folks that are thinking they might want to retire early which is really my my main purpose of this channel is to get folks to be thinking about that it's go time. If you want to retire early, it's go time. If you're in your 40s or 50s, certainly if you're in your early 60s, the time is dwindling. So it's go time. That's what this video here is about. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching this video. Bye bye.